now that in Indiana, birth records or adoption records are uh, unsealed as of last year, what's kind of the, the fallout been with you guys and how you guys have been processing that and what numbers are you seeing in terms of people wanting to, to be able to access those? Well, um, you know, we definitely had a significant increase. I would say um, when the law changed, um, you know, as you know, it went to effect July 1st of 2018. So we started seeing an increase in requests probably about June of 2018 um, because there was always a little bit of a lag um, from the time of requests to, you know, through the processing time. So, um we started receiving those requests in June knowing that, you know, the adoptees knew, well, they're not going to get to them before July 1st, so if we get them in, we'll be kind of first on the list for that um, July 1st date. Um, So in that time, we ran the numbers, and, um, you know, just from the historical data, we saw about a um, three-and-a-half to four-fold increase in requests. Megan told me that you had asked um, how many people um, have requested uh, records from that time. So since July 1st uh, through um, last Thursday, so November 14th, we have had 4,590 requests um, wow. for records. Um, typically in about a year, we would have about a uh, less, little less than 1,000. Wow. Wow. Um, so, as you can see, that's it's you know quite a quite an increase. I think for 2018 total, it was just under 4,000. Okay. Um, so uh, you know, is it dropping off significantly? We really got that huge rush at the beginning um, when people found out that it was available. So it actually took us several months to process just June and July those requests. Um, because so many of them came in at one time. Um, but we've worked through those now, and um, we're still, um, you know, it's still at about a five to six month processing time, which is more than what it used to be, but a lot less than it was at the um, height of the backlog. Right. Now, um, what would you say is kind of the percentage if you had – to um, maybe figure that out uh, roughly of adoptees in Indiana, how what percentage would you say are, are requesting these uh, records? What How many do you think there are out there that are choosing not to? You know, I, I don't know because honestly not every adoption filed in Indiana has been or is recorded with our office, but I, I know that um, estimates have been that about 42,000 records were affected. Wow. Um, so I would say, you know, um, I guess on that, we could probably, you know, do the quick math, roughly 10% um, have, have taken advantage of that. Um, but... Um, you know, we have some people that had previously requested records that uh, could not get them before and now are asking um, again or just had waited because they knew that they weren't able to obtain them and, and have since asked. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so. Could you kind of uh, vaguely walk through um, what people have to do or what they have to have, to have on them to uh, get this record request through to, to do it properly? Sure thing. Um, so I'll kind of, I, I think um, I can do two, two things for you. Tell you what people will need to do to register, but then I can also, um, it might be helpful if I kind of walk you through the process of what we do when we get a request. Absolutely. Um, because I think sometimes people don't know um, the steps involved as well. So um, what need to do, um, they'll need to go online or they can call us and we can mail them forms as well because we know not everybody has online access. Um, And they will need to fill out two forms and one is a consent to identifying information, release a release and um, a consent to release of non-identifying information Um, and the uh, forms just um, and then 
then they will also, there's also a form where they can register um, with the adoption history registry. Um, and what that does, um, so if you're a birth parent or you're an adoptee, um, you can register with the adoption um, history registry. And so then that way, so say, um, it's kind of better to use an example, say I'm a, a birth parent and um, I'm interested in connecting with um, a child I put up for adoption, I can register with the adoption history program and if that um, if the child I put up for adoption later uh, decides that they might be interested in connecting with their birth parent also registers uh, we will actually run a um, query anytime someone registers with the program to see if there's a match and if so if they filled out the proper forms based on what kind of forms they've filled out uh, we will release the contact information to uh, the appropriate contact information to uh, the individuals. Gotcha. Awesome. Based on the level that they've requested. Right. Now, um, again, this might be kind of a hard question to answer, and I know that this is uh, something that's newer, but what do you see more of? Do you see more of, of birth parents looking for their kids or birth, you know, children looking for their parents? Um, I don't know. That's really hard to quantify. I mean, right. we see a, a fair number of all sides of birth parents wanting to register and adoptees wanting to register as well. Um, we don't always really know the outcome um, of it. We we just make the connections um, if requested or, or based on the consent and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's you guys are on the front end, but you don't always know you know if that contact is made or anything like that. Correct. Right. Gotcha. Well, is there anything else that maybe I forgot to ask that's an important part of this? Um, we just kind of wanted to inform people of, of the fact that this is this is out there and that these, this is why there's a bit of a backlog is because, you know, just the sheer number of people who are asking and things like that. No, I would just say, you know, certainly if, if people have any questions or they're confused about the process, absolutely don't hesitate to reach out and give us a call. We are more than happy to answer questions. We know that this is a really personal and emotional journey for people, and um, our staff uh, absolutely understands that, and um, so they will take the time and walk walk uh, you through every single step if needed. We, we have done that on multiple occasions. We'll answer every question we can. Um, we certainly can't provide um, informa the information that people necessarily want over the phone. We can't provide the adoption information, um, but we will um, provide you every bit w uh, of information we can for how you get those records and um, are more than happy to work with people and, um, uh, you know, we have Multiple, pe multiple people call many times, um, call back, because we understand that the process can be can feel overwhelming. And so um, please don't hesitate to call us and ask us questions, and um, don't feel silly about that, because we, we get it. This is a really emotional uh, situation for people, and so we're more than happy to help.